Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I wanna to take the time to share with you guys a little bit about electrical connectors and what you're gonna find in electronics. And this is very important because if you ever wanna repair electronics, you best use the correct terminology when you're looking for replacement parts, otherwise you are gonna get the wrong thing, very much so. So I've, I found a website, uh, it's based on core electronics and it seems to have a really comprehensive list. Now, some of the names I might not completely agree with, but it's a good start. I believe this is an Australian website. I will leave it down in the video description. I thought they compiled it all into uh, a pretty good report. So let's go ahead and let's go through it. And I'll walk you through the common electrical connectors found in electronics. All right, guys, here we are. And this is uh, the top of the page. And uh, it's by Core Electronics and it's called Identifying Electrical Connectors. And this is current, it's from February of 2023. So you're not gonna find too many more, you know, connectors than what you found in 2023. But uh, let's go ahead and let's just get started down with the first one. You can see a list of the connectors right there, the JSTs, DuPonts, Molex, ATX, SWD, Deans, XT60s, you know, yada, yada. There's, there's quite a few of them on there. But uh, we're gonna go through some of the main ones, all right? So uh, the first ones are gonna be the JST connectors. JSTs, you're gonna find these absolutely everywhere. Um, they get damaged quite easily. If you grab onto the wires and you pull, these connectors are often found on things like fans, sometimes little motors, sometimes sensors, the JSTs. So the problem is, is if the wires get yanked out, the whole entire wiring harness is garbage or not. You can actually find JST repinning kits and that goes for all of these connectors. You can find repinning kits for every single one of these and they're, they're quite easily uh, obtainable. So the JSTs, let's go ahead and let's go through the family. So you see at the very top right there, that top connector, that one is extremely common. Um, that's the two pin. I believe there's a four pin, just the same. These flat panel connectors like this, the RE style, so right here, this is how you read the chart, the JST family. You got an image and you've got the dimensions of the pins, the pin rows, the current capacity, which is actually kind of cool. Knowing uh, the current capabilities of certain connectors, sometimes it'll help you identify why they burned up because that often happens. Connectors will melt and you're gonna sit there and figure out why. Well, maybe it's because it's, design, it's beyond its design constraints. So there you go, the RECs, we find those all the time. The EH, we find those all the time on boards. The XA, very common. The XH, extremely, extremely common. And then there's some less common ones, but the PH down here, that is the three pin, we see those all the time. And let's see, down here, the GH family, I see those. You know, pretty much all the, the JSTs, you're, you're gonna have a lot of those. So this is probably one of those websites that I would benchmark or, or I, would, <laughs> I would bookmark and uh, I would keep it off to the side because if you're trying to look these up, man, this is definitely it. And down here, the SM series, those ones are extremely common in medical equipment. You're going to find those all over the way. Um, interesting. Some of the stats here though. Hmm. Okay. So the next connectors, these we find all the time on circuit boards, the DuPont connectors. Now, a lot of these were um, probably more old school type of connector, but we still have them all over the place. And you can see right there, they have an example of the blank connectors and the pins for the pinning kit. So if you guys have never seen a repin, that's what it looks like. The, the pins will come on a strip, it's folded metal, and you're gonna place the wire in it you're gonna crimp the wire and then it will snap into the connector. They got these little barbs and they will retain themselves inside the connector. Kind of cool. The Molex connectors. Now, this is one that people use incorrectly all the time. All right, Molex is a brand and they have all sorts of connectors just like JST. And um, 
the thing is they call a lot of things molex connectors and they you know it's it's not always true but here's some things i bet you guys didn't know were molex connectors these ones over here which look a lot like jsts you got the flat panel uh that's keyed see the key down there so you can only put it on one way and this little white one right here infamous those little stupid things often seen in like tiny little batteries and stuff so that's the intro to the molex holy cow molex is one of the biggest wiring terminal uh companies out there so you're going to find all sorts of these the standard everybody knows the molex style it's usually the large square pins high current carrying but you're going to see a bunch of them here that you probably didn't know the edge mate edge mate i've actually seen on several different devices before usually they push onto i believe pcbs that have printed uh traces so that one's pretty common the micro fit you definitely have a lot of those some of these are automotive you're not going to see those too much down here the standard uh the 0.93 inch very very typical for uh molex and i didn't know this it was 14 amps 14 to 30. holy cow never expected that so the versa blade yeah those are more for like automotive link those ones yeah we see those micro fit again yes the saber power oh my gosh the saber powers if you do medical imaging you know this one and the mlx the next ones these ones here are extremely common with medical imaging power supplies if you're ever working around power supplies you're going to see these type of connectors very common and let's see super saber yeah that's if you've ever worked on computers you've you've definitely dealt with some of these uh, let's see the extreme 1060 power that one's kind of a cool one i've never seen that one before i'm fascinated by it regardless uh the extreme energetic I have seen that one. It's been a while, but I have seen that one on a um, on a commercial device. It's, it's been a long time. The power the power plane bus bar. So this is another one of those where it will push over like a section of a PCB. You can see right here, and you can see the the female and the male. Pretty common. Look at that. We have a whole second page of Molex connectors. Now, the MX64, you're going to see this style often in automotive. Um, actually, most of these down here, the MX150Ls, um, very common automotive because they have fluid intrusion built into the connector. So it's fluid intrusion prevention. So very, very good connectors, very expensive. Sometimes you can find them on Amazon. Not too bad. Um, I use those type of connectors often, especially because of the amperage carrying for uh, my CNC machine because dust ingress and fluid intrusion are two things you definitely don't want when you're dealing with a CNC machine. So those are the type of connectors that I choose. Uh, let's see, that takes us to the next, one of the, one of the most common connectors that you're probably gonna see everywhere. That is the ATX right there. The ATX, there's all sorts of different types of ATX connect connectors. Um, this one here, you can see it's got the four pin, um, that's the newer style. The older style was what a 24 pin or something like that. Uh, but anyway, there you go. ATX, very common. And a lot of people still call those Molex connectors, but um, this one particularly because it, you're only ever really gonna find it in, in motherboards, they call it an ATX connector. Now here's one that a lot of people never know what to call it, the SWD connector. Now this is one of them that actually d made me decide to do this video because SWD connectors, you can repin those, all right? So normally the, the ribbon will crimp down. And if you break the connector, you can resolder these and you can re-terminate them. So if you got the SMD component that's broken at the motherboard, as long as it didn't rip the trace, you can desolder them and you just replace it. Often they'll get bent pins, extremely common with bent pins. Often on the SWD connector, there is like a blocked pin, and that's usually either a security pin so that you only use one special cable or so that you get the cable polarity specific. And when you know it, sometimes people pop it in there or you don't put it in straight. Sometimes it's shifted over one pin, so it bends some pins, and then they snap off. You can fix these. So 
SWD connectors, probably one of the most common connectors that you're going to see in medical equipment. They're always going to be found on, um, on the circuit boards themselves. Pretty common. Um, you can see down here an example of the SWD connector on a little board. And, uh, oh, this is uh, actually a JTAG um, to SWD adapter. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Makes for easy breakouts when you're doing uh, breakouts of the ribbon cable. Interesting. Anyway, the T connector, or what a lot of people, I guess, call the Dean connector. I've never heard it called the Dean connector. We always call them the T connector. And these ones here are normally used in batteries, and they can carry a reasonable amount of current. They're pretty common. Uh, it says right here, current up to 30 amps. So that little guy can get it going. A lot of these little lithium ion batteries, that's what you want, something reasonably hefty. And if that's not hefty enough, that's when you got to step it up to the next one. It's the XT60, the 30, and the 90. These ones here, anybody that has done like uh, drones, like, you know, um, if you're flying drones, <laughs> you're, com you're going to be very common to see these connectors. And that's because these ones here handle way more current. And current is what you want when you're working with lithium, especially when you're working with drones and, and quads, um, quadcopters. But uh, these you're going to also find on things that have batteries. Sometimes pre-made battery harnesses and whatnot are going to have these style connectors right here. They are easy to find on the open market. So if you want to make up your own batteries, if you have a broken connector, maybe it's arky sparking, maybe the pins lost some of their uh, springiness. If they lose their springiness, it'll start sparking around the, the female socket. There you go. You can find replacements quite easily. I think I found mine on Amazon. So there you go. The screw terminal blocks. Oh yeah, there's a whole variety of screw terminal blocks, guys. And yes, you can stick the wire straight into the screw terminal block. A lot of people do. Horrible practice. If you're using screw terminal blocks, I highly suggest you use wire ferrules, crimp the wire in a ferrule, then stick it in. You are gonna save yourself so much hassle later if you use ferrules when you're doing screw terminal blocks. But there you go. There are a whole variety of different screw terminal blocks. I mean, there's probably like 100 different ones. They're used often in industrial environments. And, you know, ideally, it's easy to troubleshoot because they're exposed contact points. You can get your meter down in there. Very nice. However, they break, they get brittle over time, and sometimes the screw down tension, if wires get yanked, they crack. They crack the plastic, and then the whole entire terminal block is now garbage. So the screw terminal block, you can find them, measure them out. Um, often the color is obviously a big indicator over how much current they can have and their form factor. So if it's a green one, the chances are a green one's gonna be pretty similar. There's blue, I, I think there's white ones, but screw terminal blocks, you guys have seen them. Definitely a um, factor of industrial electronics, you're gonna see them everywhere there, but uh, also days of old electronics, some of the older units, you'll find these everywhere. DC power connectors. Okay, well these things here, you can definitely find on Amazon. The important thing to know about DC power connectors is that they are measured on their outer diameter and the inner diameter. So you're gonna see right here, it says 5.5 by 2.1, the barrel jack. So I, I've always called them barrel, barrel jacks and barrel plugs. Some people call them coaxial plugs. It is what it is, guys. Um, the most important thing that you should know is that you have to have two diameters. So there's the outer diameter and the inner diameter. Make sure you get both of those. And the thing is, you can buy entire kits of these. You can buy a whole bunch of them for really cheap on Amazon. And I suggest everybody that even works around power supplies have these extra. I have a whole bunch of them in my electronics drawers. That way there, if I need to custom make a power supply or if I get one that's broke, you can see right here a board mounted um, barrel jack. Those things right behind me, that guy right there, these board mounted barrel jacks, they break all the time. Often right here around the solder joint is where you're gonna get cracking. And that's because a lot of force is on that whole assembly. And often it's, it's a lot of leverage and it's just not gonna handle, especially a lot of torque. You're gonna find these all the time on laptops that are broke. So it's either the jack itself is broke or the solder joint right here around the pins 
is going to be broke on laptops and it's so easy to go in and fix. So if you ever have one of those times where you got a DC power jack and you gotta like pull the cord to the side in order to get it to start charging or something, that's your suspect right there. Also on barrel jacks, where the hard spot meets the soft spot, right here at the strain relief, because a lot of them have horrible strain reliefs. The strain relief is where these things usually fail. So if it's not the barrel jack itself on the board, it's going to be at the strain relief is where they're gonna fail. And it's guaranteed. And that's because often they're, they're plugged in and they're kept at a really tight downward angle. Sometimes the power supply doesn't have a long enough cable so it's suspended midair, so it's putting all that force on the jack and on the plug. You never know. So keep extra plugs around. You, all you got to do is cut the old cable, re-terminate it, and uh, put a replacement plug on, and you're good. Now, the one right here in the middle is kind of a cool one. These ones would be really neat to keep if you have a regulated DC power supply, because if you ever want to test electronics, you got this little guy right here in the middle where you have two screw-down posts. Very cool. Very neat. I do have for my regulated DC power supply, I've got pre-made barrel jacks of various diameters. That way there, if I have a question on an electronic device, I just plug it in, plug the, plug the device in, and look at the current and see if it's trying to pull current. If it is, okay, now we can, you know, increase the voltage to its correct level. You know, they're, they're great for troubleshooting electronics. Also, if you maybe want, you want to check and see how much current an electronic device is pulling, sometimes there's a short on the board, regulated DC power supply with some barrel jack adapters. Going to save you every time, man. That way there, you don't overcurrent your board, maybe start a fire or permanently destroy a PCB. So just let you guys know, regulated DC power supply, barrel jack adapters, best way to go. And uh, let's see, AC power connectors. Now, there's the IEC, which is the D shape over here. And uh, this little guy over here, I don't know if that's an IEC standard for the, the figure eight. Uh, some people call them the, the bow tie connector. Some of these bow tie connectors will have a flat plane on one side. So it only goes in one direction. They're, they're polarized. Some of them are non-polarized. This one here, you can see it is non-polarized, but uh, nonetheless, if you find one of those cables, save it. <laughs> you will need it eventually. Uh, so anytime I see one of these bow tie style power cords, I save it, <laughs> guaranteed. And uh, Anderson power pole connectors down here at the bottom. Now these are the ones that you're gonna find in a lot of battery type of applications. So if you have a UPS system, if you have uh, batteries, if you have sometimes jumper, jumper cables for like tow trucks and stuff, they use these style connectors because they're hefty. They're not waterproof. They are just hefty as all get out. And the cool thing is, is they handle a heck of a lot of current. So that's why they're fantastic for things like uh, UPS systems. You're gonna find these everywhere. You can uh, get replacements. So if you wanna make your own battery packs for those UPS systems or something, if you're really game for it, go ahead. Just make sure you use the correct rated hardware because uh, if you use underrated hardware, UPSs can pull a heck of a lot of current. And down here, RF jacks or RF connectors. They call them SMA connectors. They are um, they're used for all sorts of applications. We see them on everything from uh, video systems. They use them on um, RF transmission between uh, you know certain networks and hospitals. These connectors are absolutely everywhere. There's different sizes. They're small. There's large. You're going to often see these where you're going to have antennas. All right. So if you have some sort of antenna, these ones here, I do highly recommend the gold plated plugs and ones that fit nice and tight because some of them are sloppy and some of them are not gold plated. And there's nothing worse than chasing your tail with a spectrum analyzer because you've got some garbage connectors out there. I've seen it very common. Down here at the bottom are the mini RF connectors. And these ones here, you will see all over the place. You can see one right here on this little PCB. These ones are very common in medical equipment and often places that have Bluetooth or they have embedded Wi-Fi. You're going to find these type of connectors. They just pull straight off and, and push straight on. So if you're working with a PCB and you see some of these connectors out there, all you got to do is stick a little uh, pry tool under a corner and just pop it. They'll come right up. 
it's really not that bad. Pretty simple stuff. And, um, you know, just make sure you're very delicate. Don't yank on the cable, right? I have actually pulled the cable off the RF connector before. These little mini guys, they are kind of sensitive. And don't bend them at an extreme angle. It is like, um, it is kind of a sensitive cable, right? You can see these two black cables over here in this picture. They are kind of sensitive. Don't bend them. Because if you create an RF leak between the two, you will also be chasing your tail. Let's say the antenna flops around just a little bit and all of a sudden you lose signal. God, I've, I've seen it. It's just a pain. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave a link to in the video description for this page. You can check it out yourself to get a little bit more information on electrical connectors. I just thought it was so cool and it's definitely worth uh, doing a run through with you guys. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask them down below. I will do my absolute best to get you a correct answer. But uh, just to let you guys know, if, if you're trying to order a part and it's got a specific type of electrical connection, make sure you get the correct amperage, make sure you get the correct family and style of connector because all it has to be is one digit off and you're gonna have a different form factor, different <laughs> current capacity. It, it, there's, there's a lot of different things. Um, so make sure you get an exact part. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Just a little bit on electrical connectors. Hope you find this very enjoyable. If you do, please give me a like down below. And I've got some other videos I'm going to be releasing pretty soon. As soon as I get them back from my editor, I think you're going to like them.